All right, let's get our basic timing set up in our tuner studio for our Miata here, shall we? First thing you're gonna to wanna to do, make sure you have your base map set up, make sure your car can start up and idle at least. If you haven't gotten that far, do some more YouTubing. Um, I don't have any videos that'll show you how to do it, but make sure you get your idle, uh, or your car idling before uh, you continue on here. Once you got your base map uploaded, car's turning on, your car's idling. Now, if you do need help for your idle, I can help you out there. So, for me, and by no means is this a tuning video, for me, this worked. So, go into idle control here, make sure that we are set to inverted, it comes set with normal, and make sure your valve frequency is set to 279 or 313, either one works, um, as described down here where it says Miata valves are closer to 300 hertz. And uh, you know, make sure our key's on, whenever you do this, you know, just make sure all this is set up. We're gonna use uh, controller settings, because I was already set up. So, um, yeah, so you'll wanna send current settings if you're turning yours on, but yep, inverted, 279, we're gonna burn. Close that out. I've got my fans wired to turn straight on when I start the car. All right, so now when you set that up, you'll be able to go up here into your idle settings. You go down to idle warm-up duty steps. And um, right here where you've got the line that shows what the temperature's at, where the car's at. So you can adjust these two values here up, and that will make your idle go up. Or if your idle's too high, you can make it go down. But again, we're trying to get the idle around 850. So to get your idle set up, this is, uh, this is the one way to do it in Tuner Studio. And then of course, we obviously should start out by trying to set the idle by the, uh, the screw right here first. <sighs> All right, so let's go ahead and get the car started, shall we? Right, got a car turned on. We've got our idle. Uh, that's a little high. We'll just go ahead, go in here, adjust our value down with the, the button here on the keyboard until we get it to 950, or I'm sorry, 850. Alright, jump over to the other value there, drop it down a little bit as well. Alright. Good right there. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll leave that where it's at. We're not going to burn it. We're going to go up here to our ignition wheels option decoder, and we're going to come over here to where it says yours should probably already say use table, but you're going to want to drop it down to fixed timing, and then make sure your timing for fixed advance is set at 10 degrees. And then we will go ahead and burn that. And while you're burning it, give it a little gas so the car doesn't die. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna mess with this trigger angle offset. Um, right now, yours might be set at 3.5 or six or something in that area. So your car might be idling rough, it might be idling fine once you change to a fixed timing. But what we're looking for here is to see if the crank itself is showing 10 degrees. Um, and if not, we're going to adjust the trigger angle offset here. So where I'm going to actually go ahead, since I've already done this, I'm just going to go ahead and bump this up to like 6 and show you guys what it looks like there. So if you guys don't know how to set up a timing light on a Miata, um, I got this one on Amazon, I think for like, I don't know. 20, 30 bucks or something. So take one end, put your clamp over your number one spark plug wire, take the black part, put it on the ground, take the 12 volt, stick it on the alternator. And then what we're looking for is down there on the crank, right? So we've got our top dead center, which is the T. Then we've got our 10 degree advance, and then a 15 or 14 there at the end. So what we're going to do 
So we're going to take this light and we're going to shine it down there and see exactly where our timing mark is. So you, you guys can kind of see where that white line is there. See that white mark? So since we're at fixed timing, that needs to be right at the 10 degree mark. So since it's not right at the 10 degree mark, what we need to do is come back over here and do our trigger wizard, our trigger angle offset rather. Um, and then we need to adjust this value either up or down. So for me, we need to go down. So we'll go down, let's say one degree, and then we'll go back and check it until we get this timing mark exactly at the 10. So see, we're still sitting at like eight. It looks like we actually need to go up at least another two degrees there. So we'll, we can tell those marks are, um, we can tell by the marks there about how much we need to, uh, or I'm sorry, go down, not go up. So we'll go ahead and put it at three degrees. Now, of course, every single car is going to vary. Every single car is different because it goes off of where your cam angle sensor is, as well as just everything else in general with your timing. So don't vary, or I'm sorry, don't base your timing setup off of mine because yours is going to be different. All right, so we're, like just barely behind being centered on that 10 degree mark there. And also, if you guys notice, I'm not using a jumper inside the diagnostic box. You don't need to do that. Once you set it at 10, it's set at 10. So now that we're super, super close on the, the timing here, this, this would be the part where you finally dial it in. So, <laughs> Go ahead and put mine at the two. Come back here. And now you can see that we are dead center at 10 degrees on the timing there. Dead center. So that right there is timing set up perfectly. So now that our timing has been set up perfectly, at a two angle offset, two degree angle offset, excuse me. We'll go back in here where it says fixed timing. We'll go ahead and put it to use table. And then we will burn this. Make sure you give it a little bit of gas so the car doesn't die. And that's us. So now we're running off of our ignition tables and our timing should be set exactly to what Tudor Studio says it's set to. So we should be able to come down here and it's still safe. Oh, that's okay. Well, it's actually a little bit past it now because the idle's gone up a little bit. But yeah, there you go. So I could probably actually dial it back just a, just a few. Um, but yeah, that's how you set your ignition timing on these Miatas. Hopefully Hopefully this is a more thorough video than what you've what you found. Because for me, I, I tried to watch some of these videos and I couldn't see the timing marks on the pulleys or anything like that. But um, I also want to note that this is the old pulley. As you can see, I just replaced that pulley because I went to check my timing mark. And you see my timing mark is over here. Well, when you get these pulleys brand new from the factory or wherever you get them from, that timing mark is over here at about 1 o'clock. So what happens with these Miata crank pulleys is they spin within themselves. They're like pressed in together. So your timing mark can be way off. So you see where I made a predictive timing mark and did my like timing just so I could run my drift events. Um, and even that was off, uh, but I was only off by like 1.5 degrees. So to be fair, that, that actually um, helped. But to be safe, if you see your timing marks way off when you go to check your timing when you're doing this, just spend the $200 or whatever better to get the ATI damper or the OAM one. Make yourself uh, have some peace of mind there. But yeah, that's how you set your ignition timing in a Tuner Studio and on a 1.6 or possibly the same thing on a 1.8. Hope you enjoyed.